Good day. I'm Mickey Iqbal, Senior Principal Solutions Architect with AWS. I've had a lot of discussions with colleagues across several industry sectors about 5G. Colleagues like yourself. And I hear a lot of different perspectives on the topic. Some common patterns are emerge. For example, uh, I hear very often that 5G is a wonderful new technology and it shows great promise for advancements in all industries. But on the other hand, I also hear that 5G is yet another hyped up technology trend, another buzzword perhaps, and that the industry is now considering it cool, but tomorrow it will be something else. So no one will even remember 5G. So which one is it? And if there is indeed an opportunity, then how can you and your organization benefit from it? What are the emerging architecture trends, architecture patterns that are available for you perhaps today to realize the 5G opportunity? This is what we will cover in this presentation. So let me take you through how this presentation is going to flow. Well, first of all, I'll start by demystifying the myth around the 5G opportunity. I will discuss the challenges as well as many opportunities that businesses in the industry and different sectors are thinking about or facing when embracing 5G technologies. We'll talk about use cases, different architecture patterns, and provide examples of how AWS is helping these customers across different industries turn these challenges into opportunities. I will also follow with some real customer stories. We'll talk about how customers in different industry sectors are working with 5G capabilities and AWS and many of AWS partners as well. There is a big opportunity for you to start thinking about future-proofing your technology investments and adopting and exploring use cases that will give you and your business an edge with 5G capabilities. So let's dive a little bit deeper into this. At AWS, we pride ourselves for being a customer-obsessed business. Indeed, a majority of our capabilities have been innovated and deployed as a direct result of our customers asking for them. And we're seeing 5G usher in an era of new demand across a wide spectrum of industries in which our customers operate. In fact, based on customers' feedback, we believe, our point of view is, that 5G is bringing about a technological evolution which will have a seismic impact on industries and societies across the globe. No matter which industry analyst report you pick up and look at, the demand for 5G is slated to explode in the next few years. While some still argue that 5G is a hype, the reality is that we see the pace of investment around 5G really beginning to grow and grow more. And there are some important levers that are having an impact on this growth. So first of all, one of these levers is the exponential increase in the rate of data which is being generated and actually in the need to now process, to analyze this data at the very edge of the cloud. There's the increasing adoption of massive internet of things, which has a multiplier effect on this explosion of data. Across industry, future thinking, Customers are looking at designing different use cases, different business models, different monetization schemes so that they can be disruptive in their industry. And they are utilizing 5G capabilities. And finally, what we see is a rich digital ecosystem which is developing uh, across industries as organizations are starting to adopt more and more 5G capabilities. So what really makes 5G so different from all the previous generations of technology? Well, there are three primary ways in which 5G is fundamentally changing the landscape. First is the latency. 5G promises to significantly reduce the latency, which is essential in some of the mission critical use cases. Think autonomous vehicles, think about self-driving cars, which are going through congested traffic junctions without any stoplights and traffic flows through without a hitch. A great mission critical use case for very low latency. 5G is positioned to provide latency which is less than 10 milliseconds. Second is the speed. This is critical as the volume of data that's being generated today is increasing multifolds. 
5G will provide speeds up to 10 gigabits per second, and thus will be very valuable to use cases that require significant data transfer speeds. Think about the multimedia use cases. Think augmented reality application. Think virtual reality applications. And finally, bandwidth. With the ever-increasing need to support more and more devices, both on the customer side and also on factory floors, 5G will support up to a million devices per square kilometer. This is a lot more than 4G used to do. And it's going to drastically change the way we look at networking in the areas of high congestion. Think highly congested city blocks, think largely packed sports stadiums and arenas, and the experience that the users are going to have with 5G. So there's a lot going on in the 5G area, and it's really, really differentiate, differentiating from previous generation technologies. And a lot of it has to do with how our CSP customers, uh, which are the communication service provider customers, have designed 5G and the networks around it. And so let's talk a little bit about what are some of the challenges that they are facing and then some of the opportunities that they are availing in many of these with help from AWS. Our communication service provider customers have been solving complex challenges which are literally transforming every industry around the world as they develop 5G networks. Some of the common challenges that they are facing though, for example, are in the area of virtualization. Many of these communication service providers have legacy networks, they have grown through mergers, acquisitions, and they have to now virtualize not just the core network, but all the way to the radio access network. There's an exponential increase in radio and transport need that require edge cloud. There's the complexity of orchestration. It's multiplied due to diverse ecosystems and the need for new applications. And the need for 5G monetization models beyond mobile customers. So all of the above challenges require architectural patterns to solve for these issues. And our CSP customers are working with AWS to gain efficiencies while overcoming these challenges. For example, AWS provides architecture patterns such as microservices architecture patterns, which the CSPs are using to independently scale beyond legacy limits. The AWS is providing stateless architecture patterns, which the CSPs are using to decouple session processing and isolation of failure. With AWS, they're getting architecture patterns for DevOps-based tooling, which is allowing them to innovate faster. API-based programmable architecture patterns and containers are allowing the CSPs to orchestrate and automate network functions. And then as the CSPs carve out their network using network slicing, AWS architecture patterns around storage, compute, and network resources are also helping the CSPs in coming up with new monetization models. So these are some of the challenges and some of the opportunities that our communication service providers are facing. Now let's talk about the rest of the industry. Um, many of the business sectors are also looking at um, how do they avail 5G opportunities? And they have some common challenges as well as common opportunities as well. So first of all, from a customer's perspective in any industry, security is number one. It's the top of mind for every single customer that we've talked to. And as more and more devices are being connected, they keep on you know, wondering about how do we keep this data secure? Uh, you know, and that's a big problem, uh, that big challenge that many of customers are still trying to solve. Secondly, there's the issue of connectivity. Now, connectivity is still a challenge, especially in the remote areas. We have customers who are uh, in mining and they have remote mines and they're looking at uh, applying 5G use cases there, but they are limited by connectivity issues in these remote areas. Of course, you know, with uh, 5G networks from different communication serv service providers also getting deployed, there's still connectivity issues um, in, in many regional depo deployments as well, which will be overcome uh, with time. Now, the other major issue that many of our customers are facing is uh, that they are brownfield and they have a lot of legacy and they have to modernize and they have to get to a new microservices-based virtualization, uh, container-based, uh, you know, services uh, arena, and that requires a lot of work. And so these are, you know, again, some of the challenges that many of the customers that we talked to that we are working with are facing. But at the same time, what we see is a number of opportunities. A lot of different businesses, a lot of different customers are looking at 
uh, you know, different use cases, new application models to go after. And you could literally classify all of these opportunities across multiple customer segments into three big buckets. So the first bucket is the, you know, the enhanced mobile broadband bucket, which basically, uh, or classification, which basically provides much faster, much higher throughput, which could be a key enabler for industrial IoT. The second one is that, you know, what we call uh, ultra reliable low latency for very mission critical apps. And this is, for example, uh, the, the, the AR, VR, as well as the, uh, the, the autonomous vehicle example that we talked about. And then um, the third one, uh, the third classification is in the area of massive machine type communication. And this basically is where you know you have billions of connected devices now, and there's lots of different use cases around these as well. And you know as we start thinking about these challenges and these opportunities that uh, different industrial sectors, the less communications sector is facing, different markets are facing with respect to five G, and as they're thinking of growing, uh, you know we start having, you know, seeing some patterns and having some conversations with customers. So one of the frameworks that, you know, we use in conversations with customers um, is this two by two uh, framework, which has, uh, it's a quadrant chart basically. And on the Y axis is the bandwidth going from low to high. Uh, and on the X axis is the latency going from high to low. And typically, you know, the customer use cases could be placed in some of these quadrants. And what really happens is that uh, we see a lot of customers using use cases which are in the top left quadrant of this chart and the bottom right quadrant of these chart. And what they aspire to do is to move to the top right quadrant, which is you know, very low latency and very high bandwidth. Uh, and so many of the architecture patterns we see emerging with customers, and we'll talk about some of these next, uh, you know, come from conversations like this. So we find this as a very useful way uh, as we discuss with customers where they are today, uh, what are their needs and aspirations from a business perspective, from a technology perspective, what kind of investment um, they're willing to make. Um, and then we work with them to get them to the target end case, um, which is determined based on what those architecture technology as well as business requirements are. And as we are working with these customers across the board, you know, we're looking at many, many different use cases in many different industry sectors. And some of these are represented on this slide. Let me just take a few examples and talk about these, right? So first of all, um, we see a lot of 5G cases uh, you know, being explored in the interactive live video streams area. Why? Well, because 5G services provide the ultra low latency, which is needed to live stream high resolution video, as well as high fidelity audio. And also the opportunity to then embed interactive experiences into live videos. Similarly, with AR, VR applications, we're seeing uh, customers exploring 5G. Uh, and why? Because 5G services help AR, VR applications reduce what's called the, the, the motion to photon or MTP latencies to less than 20 millisecond benchmark, which is needed to offer a realistic customer experience. Similarly, in healthcare, uh, beyond telemedicine, we are seeing a lot of customers now get advantage from doctors exploring and adopting new technologies which leverage 5G. You know, a great example is a customer of ours, Avesha, and I'll talk a little bit more about them in detail, but they're coming up with use cases and experimenting with use cases uh, where doctors are using video analytics and, and image matching applications which are executed at the very edge of the communication service provider's cloud and it helps them with recognizing polyps uh, during procedures uh, and giving instant feedback to the doctors. We also see a lot of use cases around connected vehicles, for example, where 5G services are enabling real-time monitoring of data from sensors to secure connectivity, in-car telematics, and autonomous driving. In smarter farming, healthier crops, we're seeing you know, a lot of adoption of 5G use cases with sensors um, that are smart and they're monitoring field conditions and they're detecting uh, you know, 
changes in there, letting the farmers know when to add more water, when to provide pesticide, where to provide pesticide, what kind of pesticide, what kind of fertilizer, and therefore a lot of advancement in smart farming using these sensor-based technologies. Smarter factories automation, there's a lot going on in this area as well. Uh, we'll talk a little bit later about some of the examples of where uh, some of the customers are using the quality control at end of line uh, with 5G using uh, advanced machine inference and uh, machine uh, ML inference at the edge to analyze images and videos to detect quality issues um, on fast moving assembly lines in real time gaming as well. I mean, with devices that have limited processing power, now there's so much more power in terms of streaming these games from game servers in, in uh, from the AWS Wavelength zones, which is basically an AWS infrastructure sitting at the very edge of a uh, communication service provider's cloud. So there's a whole lot of different use cases out there that our customers are exploring. Many architecture patterns as they are emerging around these use cases. So in order to then uh, realize these use cases, what these customers need um, is a set of capabilities, a set of architectures, a set of architecture patterns that kind of come together and provide that 5G capability uh, for that customer. And AWS is certainly positioned uh, for our customers to provide these capabilities. So let me talk a little bit about the end-to-end uh, platform that AWS has to offer, which includes many services and capabilities that we have built to help our customers realize their 5G potential and opportunity. Uh, and certainly we are helping you know, communication service providers as well as sector um, customers in all, uh, in all other sectors with, with many of these capabilities. Uh, and some of these capabilities, by the way, you know, are not specifically 5G, but you know, they're part of an architecture pattern that is necessary. It's part of services and capability that are necessary to cohesively come together um, to deliver um, the 5G capability that the customer is looking at. So let me just quickly talk about you know, at least a few of these technologies. And by the way, this is not an exhaustive list. There's, there's many other capabilities as well. So let's start with CloudFront, uh, which is our fast content delivery network service that securely delivers data, videos, applications, APIs to customers globally with low latency, high transfer speeds, uh, all within a very developer-friendly environment. You know, we talked about devices and security being at the top of mind for each customer. Um, and so we have uh, free Artos, which includes libraries for connectivity, security, and over-the-air updates for connected devices. Um, AWS IoT Greengrass you know, seamlessly extends the you know, AWS to edge devices so that they can act locally on the data that they generate while still using the cloud management analytics and durable storage. Uh, with IoT Greengrass, connective devices can use um, and or run AWS Lambda functions. Um, they can run Docker containers or, or both. Uh, they can execute predictions based on machine learning models, uh, keep device data in sync, and, and many other similar capabilities. For video streaming, we have uh, Kinesis Video Streams, which makes it easy to securely stream video from connected devices uh, to AWS for additional analytics, machine learning, playback, and other processing. Um, we have for industrial automation, uh, RoboMaker, which is a service that makes it uh, easy to create robotic applications at scale. Um, similarly, um, AWS SageMaker Neo converts the framework-specific functions and operations for, for, for TensorFlow, for MXNet, and PyTorch, for example, in a single compiled executable, executable that can be run anywhere. Uh, Alexa Voice Train you know, allows third parties to add intelligent voice control to any connected product that has a microphone and a speaker. So in addition to that, you know, now customers are also asking for processing to be done sometimes on their premises. And as I talked about this earlier, for ultra low latency, the processing may need to be done at the very edge of the 5G cloud. So AWS has uh, Outpost, which is a fully managed service that offers the same AWS infrastructure, AWS services, APIs, and tools virtually in any data center co-location space or on-premises facility for a truly hybrid experience to our customers. Similarly, AWS has deployed AWS Wavelength Zones, which is an AWS infrastructure which is 
optimized to run on the mobile edge computing uh, network of our communication service providers. And we'll talk a little bit more about this. So many, many different capabilities are being met with different AWS services. You know, an end-to-end -end platform of capabilities and services has been delivered by AWS. And this is not an exhaustive list, but just a representation of how AWS is working with customers across the board. Uh, but specifically for Five, for, for our communication service provider customers, AWS has also done uh, a lot of great work with respect to architecture patterns. Now, I talked earlier about some of the opportunities and challenges that are being faced by our communication service provider customers. And these were in the area of virtualization, orchestration, network slicing, uh, as well as legacy transformation and monetization. So our AWS team has developed uh, a white paper with a number of different architecture patterns that address many of the pain points that our communication service providers are facing. Um, there is a link on this chart to that uh, white paper. Also with this presentation, you will get some reference links. Um, I would highly encourage you if you want, if you are interested in, deep, in, in a deeper dive uh, into AWS architecture patterns that support the creation of 5G networks, uh, then to look into this white paper. Now, let's talk a little bit about some of the customer use cases, specifically around low latency. And let's start with AWS Wavelengths, which I briefly mentioned earlier. Now, AWS Wavelengths zones are AWS infrastructure. These are deployments that, are, that have embedded compute and storage, and they reside within the communication service provider's data center at the edge of the 5G network. So application traffic from 5G devices can reach the application servers running in the wavelength zone without leaving the telecommunication network. What this does is it avoids the latency that will result if the application has to go all the way to the data center, therefore traversing the internet and going through many different hops. As you see on this chart, the top diagram shows the first case where the communication from the device is actually going all the way to the data center. But in the bottom chart, or the bottom part of the chart, you will see that the wavelength zone is now available at the very edge of the communication service provider's 5G network. And therefore, the latency is much, much lower. In this case, less than 20 milliseconds, which is amazing. There are many customers that have adopted these capabilities uh, with AWS. And you know, they're seeing great success. So let me now talk a little bit about some real customers who are using these capabilities uh, so that you could get some, some better idea as well. So one of these customers is uh, an application called Shot Tracker. Now in the world of sports, Shot Tracker is testing how sensor-based technology can transform the game of basketball when computing is done at the 5G edge. Shot Tracker is basically made up of three components. One is basically a Shot Tracker enabled basketball. The other two are uh, player sensors and then anchors which are placed in the rafters. And many leading sports vendors today are you know, creating uh, basketballs which have this Shot Tracker technology embedded in it. And then there's a tiny sensor that's uh, worn by the players. Uh, it's no, la no larger than a small empty uh, box of Tic Tacs. And then um, there are sensors which are placed in the rafters. Uh, and this is in the basketball court. So if you have many different courts in a stadium, then these will be uh, placed in uh, strategic positions around all the different courts. And so as a result of this, what you get is statistic, real-time statistics, and all the data that gets fed through the system. And it's displayed on the Shot Tracker app. Everything from box scores, and zone charts to contested versus un uncontested shots, all in real time. As this information goes to coaches, it goes to media partners, it goes to fans, and it goes to the player itself. So, you know, great, great application of 5G technology. There are many other customers that are also using capabilities from AWS and then partnering with some of our telco partners as well, such as Verizon, uh, to deploy many different use cases with success. Uh, one of them is Avisha. Uh, this is a number of these capability of these uh, customers listed on this slide. I won't have the opportunity to go through every one of them, but uh, let's go through a few of them. So first is Avisha, which is using 5G technology to help doctors detect polyps during radiology exam. 
hence improving the patient experience and potential outcomes, and fundamentally changing the diagnostic process. Um, EdgeGap, which offers game hosting, has built a solution to provide low latency, higher fairness, and reliable game hosting for players worldwide. Uh, and they have seen that they can reduce the lag by more than half. Um, not listed on, on this chart, uh, but another example is Sony, uh, which is using AWS Wavelength to improve how consumers live stream in the world's most memorable live news, sports, and entertainment events. Uh, AWS Wavelength and the 5G network provide Sony the ultra-low latency needed to live stream high-resolution video, high-fidelity audio, as well as to embed interactive experiences into live video streams. So I would highly encourage you um, to go to this link that displayed on this presentation slide, aws.amazon.com slash wavelength. Uh, this link will also be provided along with this presentation and you could yourself read uh, and review many of the customer experiences and stories where they are actually seeing a lot of value with 5G capabilities. Of course, for additional information, here are some additional links that you could go to to learn more about AWS capabilities and technologies that we have referenced throughout this presentation. Now, um, we started this presentation by talking about 5G and some of the myths around it. Um, I hopefully, well, actually, I'm, I'm sure I did, uh, demystify the myth around the 5G opportunity. We indeed see it as a huge opportunity. Uh, you got the opportunity then to learn about the the various levers that are really creating the demand for 5G and why the investment in 5G across the business sectors is increasing. You learned about the challenges as well as the opportunities that many of our customers are facing. And then you saw several cross industry use cases that are emerging across our customers and how AWS is helping our customers solve for many of the problems and get to um, a 5G enabled end user case, uh, which is very beneficial to them. There is a big opportunity out there for you to start thinking about future-proofing your technology investments and exploring adopting the use cases that will give you and your business an edge with AWS and 5G capabilities. Thank you.